William Henry Gates has given his life a reboot. The man who gave the world Microsoft is now giving his billions away. Somewhat ironically, the night before we met, anti-capitalist protests were paralysing his hometown of Seattle. Shops were barricaded, corporate greed the target. The protesters came carrying baseball bats. Next day, it got ugly. Violent, brutal. Yet only a short cab ride from the mayhem, I found myself in the tranquil surrounds of one of the biggest capitalist corporations on earth. Mr Gates, thank you very much for your time. We are met the day after serious riots in Seattle last night. Do you worry about that gap between the rich and the poor? Well, I think it's a shame for society if those who have the talents to amass fortunes don't take their their voice, their skills, their resources, their uh, colleagues, and direct some of that to helping those most in need. So it's a, a, a missed opportunity. I'm trying to get to the core of your drive to, to give. Well, I think for me, it, it partly relates to innovation. You know, I've seen the power of innovation to create the personal computer, create the internet, and so the question becomes, are we innovating uh, for those who are in great need? And I was absolutely stunned that money was not being spent on a malaria vaccine. You know, a million people a year die, and yet, you know, we were spending more on a, a drug for uh, male baldness. And so that misallocation is upsetting to me because I love innovation and I think it ought to to benefit everyone. Can I ask, did you design this, this place? No, my wife was very involved in uh, picking the basic approach and it's, it's come out amazingly well. In these gleaming headquarters, Gates is plotting a revolution. To eliminate polio, feed the world and develop a vaccine for AIDS and malaria. Bill's fortune bankrolls the foundation he created with his wife, Melinda. We, we have an expression in Australia to wear the pants. Does, does Melinda Gates wear the pants in your family? Well, she's very involved in all the foundation stuff. Uh, no more than I am. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, you're doing better than I am because my wife wears the pants. <laughs> they have three children, but there'll be no hefty inheritance. Mum and Dad aren't leaving the kids much. You've never had to have a difficult conversation with the kids of, listen, uh, you're not going to get the 61 billion. Well, they know that um, they won't grow up with gigantic wealth. Even before we got married, the idea that uh, giving kids uh, huge sums of money was not a favor to either the kids or society as a whole, we had that in mind. So we knew that a lot of it should go to the poorest in the world. As a child, he looked like a geek, and he was. I discovered computers when I was 12, and that became kind of an obsession. How did you write software? What could be done? He left home at 17 to study at Harvard, but to his dad's dismay, he soon dropped out to hang out with his nerdy mates. I and some friends, including Paul Allen, decided, hey, we were gonna be the best software developers around. So, in 1975, in Albuquerque, New Mexico, in this building, they launched Microsoft. And this is their first star photo. If you'd invested in this motley crew then, you would be a squillionaire now. As CEO, Gates was brilliant and often brutal. Somebody's just not thinking. I mean, there's no way. Yeah, you guys never understood. You never understood the first thing about this. He was also far from conventional. Is it true that you can leap over a chair from a standing position? It depends on the size of the chair. Uh, I'll cheat a little bit. By 1999... 
Yes! <laughs> He'd become the first person to make a hundred billion dollars. Bill Gates was the name on almost everyone's lips. I'm, I'm Bill Gates. Uh, Bill Gates. Oh, Bill. Oh, Bill. Okay, I've heard of Bill Gates. The great Bill Gates. I don't know. <laughs> but his best deal came in 1994 when he married Melinda French, a Microsoft employee. On your wedding day, your mother wrote a letter to you and your wife to say, from those to whom much is given, much is expected. You framed that. Did that have a big impact upon you? Yeah, she was excited to see where, where the philanthropy would lead. And now this is the Holy Scroll listing where all of this money is going to, and it's inspiring. You've got everything from $500 to build a well in a small village in India to $33 million to combat HIV AIDS in Africa. And it all adds up to just over $27 billion. Now that is serious philanthropy. The famous American industrialist Andrew Carnegie once said, the man who dies rich dies disgraced. Is there moments of your philanthropy that have touched you deeply emotionally where you feel that is fantastic that we've been able to do something? Oh, absolutely. When you go into a malaria ward that was full the last time you came and you see because of bed nets that there's hardly any kids in there. Uh, you know, when you look at how by reducing AIDS, we're cutting the number of orphans down dramatically. Uh, anytime you want to go and see the work and feel good about it, uh, you travel out to the field and you know, learn how you can do it better. And 10 years from now, would you like the foundation to be three times as big, 10 times as big? Do you ambitions for it? Well, uh, we're always trying to, to make progress. 10 years from now, you know, polio will be gone. That'll be a, a big milestone for us. Malaria deaths should be more than cut in half by then. Uh, a lot of new vaccines invented at, and out there. We should be close to an AIDS vaccine by then. So yeah, uh, huge, um, huge contributions in the next 10 years. Uh, we, we, we have big goals. It's been a wild ride for Bill Gates, one that took him to the title of world's richest. But having wasn't enough. Giving is now what drives this driven man. And he wants the rest of the rich, the 1% with most of the world's wealth, to do the same and learn the lesson that's made him a happy man. Do you have, do you have moments where you pause and think, how did this happen to me? You know, like I'm Bill Gates, I'm Microsoft, I'm giving this. I mean, you've had an extraordinary life. Yeah, I, I'm unbelievably lucky, perhaps the luckiest person around. You know, my work is interesting. It, I feel a sense of responsibility if I'm lazy about this, you know, maybe we won't get polio right, but uh, it's such a privilege. You know, I, I, I wouldn't trade places with anyone. In the Australian vernacular, good on you. And thank you for your time. Thank you.